Uh, my name is Samantha Crane. I'm the Director of Public Policy of the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network and a member of the board of Not Dead Yet. I oppose the Deck with Dignity Act. Physician-assisted suicide legislation endangers people with disabilities, including disabilities resulting from illness. Supporters frequently focus on the indignity of needing help to eat, move, or take medications. In Oregon, which passed nearly identical legislation to this one, 93% of those who died from physician-assisted suicide in 2013 cited loss of autonomy or disability as motivation. Less than 28% cited concerns about pain control. This mindset perpetuates stigma, isolation, and depression among people with disabilities. As we've seen in Oregon, which has a similar law, there's no data indicating that the safeguards in this legislation are effective. Although advocates for assisted suicide claim that there is no evidence of abuse in Oregon, the data and individual stories indicate numerous points of concern. For example, in 2013, only two of the 71 Oregonians who died from physician-assisted suicide were even referred for a formal psychiatric or psychological evaluation. Even when physicians did express concerns that an individual was experiencing depression or being pressured by family members, we have seen cases in Oregon in which patients nevertheless receive lethal prescriptions through doctor shopping. Compassion and Choices facilitates the large majority of physician-assisted suicides in Oregon and has stated so publicly. Oregon does not collect data on whether or not people who request physician-assisted suicide have been previously turned down by doctors as a result of concerns about capacity or other issues. Oregon also does not officially document cases in which concerns about abuse have been raised, even though there have been numerous such cases. For example, Wendy Melcher, who was dying of cancer in Oregon, was administered a lethal dose of barbiturates by a nurse as suppositories following a pain plan or a plan developed with Melcher's partner. The nurse who claimed that she was participating in an insisted suicide plan had not documented unmanageable pain. No doctor had prescribed a lethal dose. Melcher did not self-administer the medications. There is no neutral witness to verify the nurse's story that Melcher had requested assisted suicide. The event wasn't reported to the Oregon Department of Health as an assisted suicide. Yet, no criminal charges were brought. The case is not even mentioned in any of the Oregon's official records of assisted suicide, and the nurse is still practicing. <laughs> Finally, although the legislation claims to limit its scope to people who have terminal illness, doctors typically cannot make six-month prognoses with an acceptable level of certainty. The disability community is full of people who have outloved, outlived six-month prognoses by decades. There is every reason to believe that legalized physician-assisted suicide in D.C. would shorten the lives of many people by months, years, or decades. When people are offered the option of suicide, but not the option of affordable home care, they do not have any meaningful choice. People with significant disabilities due to illness should not have to die in order to have dignity. Instead, they need access to things that help them make the most of their remaining time, quality palliative care, respectful in-home supports, counseling, and assistive technology to maximize autonomy. Let's focus on aid in living, not aid in dying. 